here when we've been dealing with integrals, we have been dealing with either an indefinite integral where there's just an integral sign but then there are no limits. We've also been dealing with integrals where it has a limit a to b and a and b are finite numbers. What we're going to be dealing with in the next three videos is when one of the limits actually is instead of um, a finite, it will be infinity. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to evaluate an integral with infinity as its upper bound. All right, um, we are going to be dealing with this formula right here. If f of x is continuous on the interval from a to infinity, then if I'm going to take the integral from a to infinity of a certain function, we're actually going to turn it into a limit of b to infinity of a to b of f of x. That looks probably pretty confusing, so I'm going to try to help to clarify that for you a little bit. The first thing that I would like to do is have you get a picture of what we are finding when we do this. If it's asking me to, in this first example, if it's asking me to find the integral from 2 to infinity of 2 over v squared minus v, it's actually asking me to find the area under the curve from x equals 2 all the way to x equals infinity of this function. So if I were to draw a picture of this function, if I used my graphing calculator to find out what that looks like, it actually looks something like this. And what this is asking me for is to find the area under the curve from x equals 2 all the way up to infinity. So it's asking me to find this entire area. And I guess one question that we'll be asking ourselves is, is there actually an area? If you go to all the way to infinity, can that area ever reach a certain limit? So that's what we're going to be looking for as we do these problems. We will find occasionally that we don't get an answer, and so we'll say that the, lim that the um, integral diverges because there's not an answer. So we'll just get into that when we do it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example. What we are going to be doing, notice we've got an A going on and a B going on, and in all the different rules that we'll be using throughout this section, um, the letters I think get a little bit confusing. So basically I'm going to simplify it. Um, we just want to, instead of having this go from 2 to infinity, we're just going to have it go from 2 to some letter, and we're going to find the limit once we've done that integral we're going to find the limit as that letter reaches infinity. So what I suggest that people do is pick any letter that you want to. I'm going to always replace infinity with a W because my last name starts with a W. So you may pick whatever you want. So the way that we're going to rewrite this problem, instead of going from 2 to infinity, I'm going to go to, from 2 to W instead, and I'm going to find the limit as w approaches infinity. So we've just turned it into a problem where we can actually just evaluate it. So now I have 2 over v squared minus v dv. Okay, we're going to ignore the limit until I'm all the way done. I'm just going to evaluate the limit, the integral as is. All right, I do notice on this one that the denominator can factor, which sets me up nicely for a partial fractions problem. So that's exactly what I'm going to do in this problem. So if I turn this into a partial fractions problem, that's going to be 2 v times v minus 1. And if you remember, we'll separate it into a over v plus b over v minus 1. Next, I'll get that, um, get a common denominator over here. So I'll get 2 equals a times v minus 1 plus b times v. And then from here, we'll let v be something. So the first time, I'm going to let v equal 1. And if I do that, I'll get 2 equals. If I plug 1 in here, that will just turn out to be 0. And if I plug 1 in here, I'll get b. So I've just found that b is 2. And then we'll let v equal 0. And if I do that, I'll get 2 equals. When I plug 0 in, I'll get negative a. And then when I plug 0 in here, I'll get nothing. So that leads me to a being negative 2. And so now if you remember from here, we can actually get the integral of negative 2 over v plus the integral of 2 over v minus 1. And when we do that, we will have negative 2 natural log of v plus 2 natural log of v minus 1. And then from here, I am going to go ahead and turn that into 1 integral. And since they both have a 2, um, I can actually factor out a 2. So this is going to be 2 negative natural log of v plus natural log of v minus 1. And so from here, when I go to rewrite that, that's going to be 2 natural log. Since this one is the subtraction, it's going to be division, but that one will be on the bottom. So it will be v minus 1 over v. And that, that's the integral. And so now I get to evaluate it if I come over to my original problem at w and at 2. So if I evaluate it at w, I'll get 2 ln 
w minus 1 over w minus 2 ln. If I put 2 in here, I'm going to get 2 minus 1 is 1. I'll get 1 half. So then from here, we are going to um, actually, so we found the integral, that's it. And now what I have to do with it is find the limit as that um, approaches infinity. So I'm going to add to the front of my problem. Now we want to find the limit as w approaches infinity. So now we'll put infinity in for all of the w's. So we'll get 2ln infinity minus 1 over infinity minus 2 natural log 1 half. And I do notice that um, this part gives me infinity over infinity. And if it does, I get to use L'Hopital's rule. So if I do that, um, I'll still have 2ln. And then I get to actually take the derivative of that part, which is just going to give me 1 and then minus 2 ln of 1 half. Well, we know that the natural log of 1 is 0. So I actually just end up getting negative 2 ln of 1 half. And I actually could just make parentheses because 1 half is positive already. And so that is my actual answer. I get negative 2 ln of 1 half. And you might be thinking, oh, that gives you a negative number. Well, actually, it doesn't because the natural log of 1 half is already a negative number. All right, I'm going to try one more problem like that. Again, you'll notice my limits go from 1 to infinity, so infinity is my issue, so I'm going to change my infinity to a number, a letter, excuse me, and I'll have the limit as w approaches infinity of my new problem will be from 1 to w of dx over x. So now I'm just going to go ahead and evaluate th that integral. I know if I have dx over x, my integral is just going to be the natural log of x and then I get to evaluate it at w and 1. If I plug in w, I'll get the ln of w minus the natural log of 1, and the natural log of 1, log of one is just 0. So I just get the natural log of w, and I did notice I did drop the absolute values because if I do plug in w, um, since 1 is on the bottom, w is obviously a positive number, so I don't need the absolute values anymore. So that is my integral. I now have to find the limit of that integral as w approaches infinity. So if I plug in infinity, I'll get the natural log of infinity, which is infinity, which means in this case, I actually am not going to get an answer. It never gets to a spot where it narrows enough where we'd get an answer. So I would say that this um, integral does something that we will call diverges. So this integral, this integral diverges. We can't actually get an answer other than infinity.